Now that you are done creating the training samples, we need to save them. So you click on save training samples and then you navigate to the folder where you want to store the training samples. And the output feature class is going to be in a shapefile format. So you type the name that you want to name it. So I'm going to name it supervised classification. This is very important because in case you need it in future, you will just come back to this particular file. Then you need to create a signature file. And the signature file is going to be in a .gsg format. So you navigate to the folder and then you rename it and then you save it. So again, I'm going to call it supervised classification. And then you wait for it to load. Uh, sorry, my PC is a bit slow. After you're done with that, you go to the classification tab and then you click on the maximum likelihood classifier. So right there you can see the description of the maximum likelihood. Then you input the raster image that you want to classify. Okay, I've placed it twice, so I'm going to delete it. And then you input the signature file, and you're going to navigate to the folder where we've stored our signature file. And then you specify the folder where you want to store the classified raster, the result of this particular process. So again, I'm going to name it supervised classification and it's going to be in a GOT format so I'll put a dot chief uh, there's nothing else to change now you just need to click on OK and as you can see down there it's loading so you're going to wait for it to process and after it's done processing it will just display the results so this is basically what you do after you are done creating your training samples. So the main focus of this classification is creating the training samples because when you're done with that you just need to click on the classification. And since in this video we are showing how to use maximum likelihood, you're going to choose the maximum likelihood method. So now the results ready and as you can see that's the output of this classification okay it's not showing the names it's showing the values but from the signature file you can be able to tell what value represents what land cover so you can see uh, value 1 is for forest and 11 is for urban area 19 is for agricultural area and 32 is for water so you can just to make it easy for you you can just come here you click on the value and then you can just rename it to rename it easily you just press f2 button on your laptop then you you type the name of the class so 11 is urban you type urban and if you want to change the color of your classes you can just click on the the small rectangle that's showing the color and you can change it to the color that you want it to be and 32 is the water class so here I'm just going to change it to water so that's basically what you're going to do and this color is showing here they're not the best so you can just change the colors to be what you want like water you can just put it into blue color urban we can find a brown color okay it's not looking really good and i can see the the training areas are still visible so we'll remove them later forest we obviously going to use the green color for the cropland area 
So, okay, let's try the olive color. Mm, it's not so good. Anyway, you, you just manipulate the colors until you get to a point where you feel the map is looking nice and better. So, maybe yellow will be better. Let's try that one. Okay, it's not so bad. And for urban areas, we can change it to red so that you can be able to see the difference in the classes. Now let's clear the training samples. Now this shows the output map, the output land cover map. So you can see we have uh, four classes and you can see this area, as I said, it was an area where there was many cropland areas. So you can see most of the image has cropland areas and also the, it's a it's around a city so the red is showing the urban areas so that's it you're now done with the classification you have your output map so thanks guys